before we start working limit problems, the last thing we need to talk about is the precise definition of a limit. So up to this point, we talked about the tangent problem, velocity problem, area problem, distance problem. We're introduced to limits. Start, we start analyzing them a little bit. Then we talk about what continuity means. We quickly talk about the limit laws. And so the last thing you need to understand before, before working limit problems is this, this precise definition of a limit. And, and this is really important to understand. One of the reasons is that whenever we get, whenever we start doing the derivative, particularly the derivative as a function, we'll get into this notation. And you might have seen this before, or, or maybe if, if, this, if you're taking calculus for the first time, this is the first time you're seeing it. But this, this dy dx, the derivative of the function y with respect to x, and a lot of people ask, is, is this a real ratio? Is, is, this, is this a number? Is dy a number? Is dx a number? We know this, this is small. dy is small. dx is small. Well, how small? You know, even, even the concept of infinity. Well, how big is infinity? The, the, the precise definition of a limit is, is going to help you understand that. And so in, in this course, we're not going to work any problems where you have to prove using the precise definition of a limit that a limit exists. I'll, sh I'll show one example of that in this video, but after that, we're not going to go into it. The, 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 what's really important is that you understand that, that theoretical concept of, of the precise definition of a limit. So that's what I'm going to try and really hammer home in this video. And, and so I'll, but I'll also, we'll, this, I will flip through the, the textbook section here so you can take a look, take a look at this section. But okay, so it starts off, it, it gives you this limit here, and it, it evaluates the function at like an interval of x values around around the limit value or around zero. And so that also has a corresponding resulting f of x limit around around some value. And you, that, that's, that's, it's kind of like this here. You see, if you have a function, you can, you can evaluate it around the limit you're approaching, and that'll correspond to some interval around uh, the, the, the potential limit value you're approaching. So this three minus delta, as you plug, you plug that into the function, you get this. 3 plus delta, you plug that into the function, you get this. See these two intervals? This interval and this interval gives you two intervals. And so with that concept in mind, it gives the precise definition of a limit. So f is defined, the function is defined on some open interval that contains the number a, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be defined at a, just in the interval around it. So then we say that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is l, Okay, so we know that that's that's our limit, but this li this is truly the limit if what if for every number e is greater than zero, this epsilon is greater than zero, there is a number delta is greater than zero such that so the absolute value of x minus a that just means you could be any distance to the left or right of a. This is less than is between delta and zero, which 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 means that. The absolute value of the function evaluated at x, that the distance between that and L, so above or below L, is less than this epsilon. And so, so the, the big idea here, th th this is, let, let me try and simplify this for you, at least the concept of this. The big idea is that this delta and this epsilon is a variable that represents all real numbers. So literally any number that you could possibly specify is delta and epsilon. So it can be as, as tiny as you want or as large as you want, whatever. But in, th in this case, we we're talking about how small it is. There's it, so like, you, you, you ever heard the concept there's an infinite number of values between zero and one? Well, there's also an infinite number of values between zero and 0 0.1. There's an infinite number, number of values between zero and 0 0.0001. If you can, if, you, if the, the proofs that, that, the proof I'm gonna show you, the example proof I'm gonna show you, is it, it, it's pretty much showing that if, if you can show that this is true, the absolute value of x minus any number a is between zero and delta. And, and so then at the same time, the absolute value of f of x minus l, so the distance from l is less than some value epsilon. And you've proven that you can get infinitely, you pr what you've proven is that you can get infinitely close to, to, to the, the a value you're approaching. Right, that this a is the limit. The, you're, you're approaching a. You can get infinitely close to a, 
and 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 the function still exists. The function still exists with a corresponding infinitely close interval around the limit value, because because again, this is for all real num. This epsilon and this this delta and this epsilon is any real number. Really, really think about this. Let's come let's come here. So he, he, here here's your function. The limit value that that we're proposing is is L. This epsilon, so you could do L. L plus epsilon, L minus epsilon, and, and, and have some interval around L. So if we can prove in general, using just, just variables, that for every epsilon, so this is going to be greater than zero because we're just saying L plus epsilon, L minus epsilon, there is a corresponding delta. It's greater than zero as well because you just, it's, it's the A, A plus delta, A minus delta. There's a corresponding delta. So in this case, this would be the interval. It's within epsilon it's within the epsilon interval for every epsilon all real numbers there is a corresponding delta such that the, the function evaluated at a minus delta a plus delta is within that you know when you when you when you connect the two this this delta range falls within that epsilon range you see so here's an example of a proof. Here's another example. I mean, so, okay, I can show you, let, let, me, let me show you a proof real quick. So it says prove that the limit as X approaches three of four X minus five is equal to seven. Okay, we want to find a number delta such that for any X minus three, for any X, so this could be as small as we want, any absolute value of X minus three. So any distance from three, left or to the left or right of three. Is, be, is between zero and delta, then, so if this is the case, then any distance of the function from seven, the absolute value, is less than, this, than epsilon. Then we can specify as small of a number as we want here, and for it doesn't matter how small we specify, it could be 10 to the minus 500, we're going to get a finite value, corresponding value for this epsilon. And so, and so I think that's the big idea that you got to understand is that if you had the biggest computer that, that, that could exist in the universe, you could, you could calculate, you could input a delta 10 to the minus a trillion that's even, or bigger or smaller than that. And if the computer could handle it, there would be a, it, there would be a corresponding E that I, I don't know what it would be, but it maybe be 10 to the minus two tri trillion. I don't know. There would be an E though, an epsilon then you can say the limit officially exists. Okay, so, so the way this works is that they're saying, okay, we're introducing this. We're going to say, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're saying that the absolute value of x minus 3, any distance from 3 on the x-axis to the left or right of it, is between 0 and delta. Okay, so now with this, we want to prove this. So what they do is they, they simplify this here. So they... They do minus 5, minus 7, so absolute value of 4x minus 12, factor out of 4, take the 4 out. You can do that. So, so we're left with this. Okay, so now they redefine the problem. They restate the problem. They say, all right, so we, we're saying that the absolute value of x minus 3 is between 0 and delta, then, and they state this this time. Okay, so once again, they state they, this is what we've introduced, and then they, now they divide both sides by 4. And the key is we have these two are the same. So we're trying to find a number delta. So let's, let's, let's set delta equal to this epsilon over four and see if that works. So, okay, we're going to choose delta is equal to epsilon over four. All right. So now let's do the problem again. So if, if this, we, we, we're, we're saying that this is true, then what? Now we need to prove that this is true. If this is true, then let's prove let's let's prove that this is true. So we write this out, simplify to this point, and what is this? This F, this absolute value of x minus three is 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 the delta. So we can put the delta, but we got a four out front. So put the four. So this is true, but delta is equal to epsilon divided by four. So put that in, and it simplifies to epsilon. So they, there you go. You've just proved it. You you've. This, the absolute value of 4x minus 5, 
minus 7 is less than epsilon. So that they're, they're, so your limit is true. So that that's the idea. Okay? So then they 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 state this definition for left-handed limits and right-handed limits and it's the same idea. They do some examples, some proofs with uh, one-sided limits. Okay, then they talk about infinite limits, they, the precise definition for infinite limits. It's a similar idea. Um, you're, you're saying that for any distance from A, that X is from the limit value, left or right, you know, is less than delta. So no matter how close, no matter how small you make this, there will always be some finite number M to where F of X is greater than M. So they do this for infinity and negative infinity. And so, yeah, that, that's it. That is the precise definition of the limit. And so you can see, you get, you get a feel for that concept of infinitely big or infinitely small. You should, you know, you should have a better feel for what infinity is and what infinite and infinitesimally small number is like a like dy or dx and and you should also have a sense of why the why why these aren't numbers this isn't a number these aren't numbers that's why they say that this this isn't a, a fraction or an actual ratio it would be like saying to say this is a ratio is is like saying that infinity over infinity is a ratio yeah it is but the, but it, it is but it isn't because what's the what's the ratio it depends on what, well, what infinity are we talking about what what number are we specifically talking about but they are they are they do represent values or numbers so it's like it, it is but it isn't a ratio you, you see okay see you guys in the next video